Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to The Last Homely House. I'm Kate and I make things and sometimes I don't finish them and I think that really annoys a lot of people. But I always do get round to finishing them and today I'm on a finish. Now you may remember this project behind me here and this beautiful, beautiful fabric that I'm making into a dressing gown. Now, I'd pieced it all together in one very large piece, imagining I would treat it like fabric and cut it out and sew it back together again. Now, I've had quite a number of thoughts since then, and my new way of thinking about it is very influenced by a fantastic film that I saw. Now, I definitely recommend this film if you like movies. <laughs> uh, I found it on Amazon Prime, I think, uh, as a free to watch movie. I'm sure you can find it in all sorts of other places. But it's called Catherine Called Birdie, and it's a medieval story about a young girl's coming of age. And there's a, some fantastic characters in it that I really like. And Bella Ramsey plays Catherine, and she's very good. But her dad is uh, played by Andrew Scott who is a fantastic actor, played all sorts of really great roles. And in this one, he's her father. And um, I won't tell you anything at all about the plot because you can enjoy it for yourself if you want to. But I did watch an interview on YouTube with him and some of the other members of the cast. And he said that the whole time, throughout the whole film, he just swanned about in like a, a dressing gown. <laughs> And so I watched that film and I looked at that dressing gown and I really, really liked it. I loved the fabric, but I liked the drape of it and I liked the cut of it. And uh, I decided that this fabric here has got the same kind of feel to it. So I completely changed my thoughts about how I'd put this dressing gown together. So if you watch the last video, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below in case you don't know what I'm talking about. I bought this fantastic Indian block printed fabric in 10 inch squares from a shop that I'll also leave the link to uh, in the description below. It was on Etsy and it was a fantastic um, Indian block printed fabric that came from India, from an area of India that I visited a number of years ago. So I ordered these 10 inch squares and I split them into mostly pinks and all the rest. And on the last video, I was constructing fabric to cut up and make into a dressing gown. There was one comment, because um, I've read the comments and I've been very influenced by the comments, but somebody said that they didn't know what a dressing gown was. And I wondered if that was another of my lost in translations, maybe. But a dressing gown is something that you would put on after a shower or when you got up in the morning or you weren't dressed yet and you just had your pajamas on. I wear a dressing gown quite a lot because I spend quite a lot of my time in that state. Anyway, the few things that I've changed in my head about this, influenced by that movie and also by quite a lot of the, um, I looked on Pinterest a lot and the robes that are like, the, the kimono type robes. So I wonder if you can see, if I move to one side, I wonder, I wonder if you can see that I've pinned it up now. I can't fit the whole thing on the board because it's really big and long. And so I folded the top bit over, but the, how that I've constructed it now is in the blocks that will quickly and easily sew into the robe that I wanna make. Maybe I can show you on this pink one here. So, yes, I think so. So these are the bits that I put together for the sleeves. Now they're way, way too long, but I'll be able to fold those under. And so this is the shoulders here and the other sleeve there. So I tell you what might work. What about if I just put it on as good as it is at the moment? So it's not obviously nowhere near finished. And this would be what I was calling the inside. So. Now we have, I didn't cut a neckline at all. I've left that for now. And these bits here will fold back and be shorter, something along those lines. And then if 
I turn round, you'll be able to see that this then is how I imagine this dressing gown, this robe might be. Now, in the last video that I talked about this, I had a great plan for putting these two layers together and stitching it like a quilt. And my plan had been to, to put wadding in between the layers. It's like an octopus, it's all over the place and stitch it like you would uh, quilt a quilt. Now, I've had a complete rethink on that idea and now I feel like I'm just going to line it. It's interesting when I say lining because I don't intend there to be a back or a front. So I'm just going to put the two together and allow them to be whichever way around they want to be or whichever mood I'm in. And the only choices I need to make now, because I think that will come together quite simply, famous last words. The only choice I need to make now is whether I'm going to try and put pockets in this. And also I thought it would be cool to make a um, strap and put some little belt loops so that the strap could feed through the belt loops so that the thing would tie up if I wanted it to. So. It's quite changed from the last time you saw this video. I'm fine with that. I do quite like, I think it was watching the movie with Andrew Scott that made me think that I didn't want it to be heavy and quilted. I quite like the idea of it being quite floaty because this fabric really does lend itself to being pretty floaty. So I'm going to get this one down off the board now and make some space on the table and have a think about how we're going to put these two together. How does that sound? Now, I did see a comment more than once from people who said, when I get to the underarm here, I could put one of these in folded in half on the diagonal so that it would make a little bit more space here in the underarm. So that uh, instead of it being a big block like that, it would actually have a a shape, albeit a blocky shape, but it would still be a shape. And I'm still wondering whether or not to do that. So, um, because what I'm going to do now is pin this one out the same. This is the one side, but I'm going to leave those that decision for a minute and decide about it. I think it would be quite cool to put a half one in there. So I might do that. But for now, uh, that's one side, the pink side. I'll pin the other side now. Here's the box of fabrics that I have left and this would be the idea that um, I would pop that in there to make a little more space it wouldn't be so tight under the arms. Do you know I think I might do that I'll just have to choose four more pieces that will match in I'm sure I've got some pinks left in here yeah I think I'll do that and make that, yeah, more space under the arm. Oh, 
was nice. So I've had a little pin and a bit of a sew and I've put these little side bits here I put them in and I've sewn the, the outside or the, this side together now into a rough shape so it's now sort of dressing downy and don't worry about this bit at the top being very uh, over see how that overlaps like that don't worry about that I have a plan but at the moment I'm not cutting anything, I'm just blocking it together like this. And that's come together really well. So I'm wrestling, it's a little bit like wrestling with fabric. And I'm putting the pink uh, underarm um, pieces in, these gussety pieces here. And then I'm going to sew the pink layer together. Now, these squares aren't exactly 10 inches. I suppose now, thinking back, if I were ever to do this again, or someone else was going to do it, I might actually trim them all to an accurate 10 inches. That would have been a good thing to do, because the pieces are, well that one's nothing like 10 inches, is it? But when you look at the pieces, they're none of them exactly 10 inches. So there's my top tip. If you're doing this, trim all your pieces to a uniform size. So now I've pinned that little gussety thing there, and uh, have I done this one? No, so I'm going to pin this one now. So this is the other sleeve. Now the sleeves are way too long, but not to worry about that, it'll be fine. So I need another pink piece from my stash here. Actually, I've got some of these yellow ones here. I really like those, so I think I might choose that one. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, that one. That one I must have already selected. So I'm going to choose this yellowy piece here to go underneath that bit. Okay, so I'm just going to pin these together and then sew all of this around so that we end up with another one of these. That's what I'm doing now. So I've stitched both sides together now and it's surprising how crumply it's all got in the in being stored and then in, in being worked again. So I'm just going to give it a really good press before I do the next bit which will be fitting one inside the other I think. Something like that. As I'm making this you're making it up with me as I go. I haven't planned this out ahead of time at all. So if anyone else is making one of these, over on Instagram, uh, on my feed there, we've got a hashtag where you can show me what you're doing so that I can see if you're working on the same things as me. And it's T-L-H-H-L-G-S which is a long thing to remember, but it's the last homely house lime green sofa. So if you're sitting on the sofa stitching away at something that you've been inspired to do from something you've seen here, then pop that tag on Instagram and I'll see it. Now then, I'll pop this on quickly so that I can see and I can show you what I've done with, with these bits here there and here. Hmm, they kind of blend in. Now the sleeves are way, way, way too long.
but that's okay. Better too long than too short. I'm going to do something or other with the sleeves. I kind of think I want the sleeves a little a bit half sleeves like that I think would be better than full sleeves and I want to somehow or other think about putting a tie so I might make the tie soon and I've sewn the side seams up on both of them but that will be easy enough to undo the side seams if I want to put a pocket like I talked about in the last video one of those slip your hands in pockets or I will be able to add a pocket on the front if I want pockets if I actually want pockets we'll see I think this this is such a work in progress <laughs> we'll see how it's going to go now this bit needs to be inside out I think something like that and we'll move this along just get rid of the iron there's that side and now does it need to be inside out or the right side round? Uh, inside out, so that they're right, so they're wrong sides together. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Now, if this works, these should match up perfectly, and there's just going to be a lot of pinning. Now, no, 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 that's not right. They need to be right sides together, Kate. So that's the right side, and that's the right side. Okay. So, uh, let's see, they need to be right sides together. Let's do the back seam, the back of the neck first, and then everything else will follow. So that's the bit at the back, that's the bit at the back. Now because of that thing I was just saying about these not being exactly 10 inch squares, this isn't going to match up terribly well, but I'm going to make the best I can of it. And. If I, now those of you who are dressmakers out there will know that if I sew this all the way around the outside, will it turn inside out or will I have created a closed shape? Yeah. Or will it feed through one of the arms? You know what I mean if you're a dressmaker. What's it called? It's called something. So a couple of times now people have suggested that I should apply to go on the Great British Sewing Bee. No way. No way. I definitely couldn't be working against the clock with something like this. Mind you, I wouldn't make something like this, would I? It's called bagging out. That's what it's called, I think. You know what I mean? Well, will this bag out or will I have created a closed shape is my question. I don't know. We're going to go for it. Right sides together. I could be some time. Okay. As for the front, where the collar would be if you had one, I just think that if I left it like that, quite square and blocky, then when I sew around that, it'll just fold open on whichever side it is. And I think that might look quite nice. Okay, I'm going to use every pin I own. And I'm going to be quite a while. Okay, so these are lining up quite well. So that's good. Yeah, look. They're lining up really well. So they must be more like 10 inches than I thought. I'm going to pin every junction now. If I can find them. There it is. Nope. That's the inside. There, that's the sleeve. There we go. going in.
So that's the back of the neck there. Okay, so everything now should fall into shape after that. So that's one of the fronts. And so that's going to be an another of the fronts, I think. Yeah. Yes, that's another of the fronts. Okay. Tell you what might be easy if I put it down on the table. There's a sleeve and there's a sleeve. Ah, we're cooking with gas now. And there's a sleeve. It's coming together now, guys. There we go. We have a sleeve. And do we have another sleeve? Yes, we do. And that one's going over here. Pull it through this way. Okay. And there it is. There's the other sleeve. Okay. There we go. So yeah, I was I was thinking I might top stitch this because what has to happen now, after I've had a little lie down, is has to have a really really good press so I didn't have to worry about all that bagging out nonsense I have to decide where I'm going with the sleeves and how short I want those somewhere like that and then my plan for the top was once this is all pressed and beautifully stitched and the other thing that I have to do is decide on the hem so how I'll do that I'll I'll just decide what length I want it and fold it up and just top stitch round the hem. So I'm going to give you a twiz. So that's how I thought the front would be. So that whichever way out you had it, you would have a little bit of the front. And then if I make a tie and put belt loops here, then that would tie up. And so that then is a, a very partial finish. I have to say, I really like it. Have I got it the pink way out? Let's do it the pink way out and see what it looks like the pink way out. Now that I've done the sleeves, it's gonna be quite easy to do that. Okay, so this is the pink way out with the colorful side on the inside. Okay. I'm around about now, I'm really, really pleased that I didn't uh, quilt it like I was planning to, because I think that would have made it um, too heavy and warm. And it doesn't need to be, it's not for warmth really. It's just for floating around. So that's what the pink side looks like now. But you know, I do want pockets. I think now it would be the time when I would put my hands in my pockets and I'm thinking I would like patch pockets. If you remember back to the last video, kept these two pieces of tiger fabric back. Which way round is it? That way round. And so my, my thinking is that they would be cool as pockets, wouldn't they? Big patch pockets. So maybe I just have pockets on one side. Hmm, quite like the idea of that. For now though, I mean, I'm going to stop working on this now so that I can sit and hand stitch all the way around the outside. And so you'll see this in one second, but for me it might be a couple of evenings of stitching. But I tell you what I'll do while I've got the basket out. How about I make the tie? Because a tie and two belt loops would be a really good idea, wouldn't it? And these are the fabrics that I have left over that I can choose uh, to do a tie from so and I really like this one that's on the top I wonder if there's enough of that to make all of it that color probably not no I think no it'd be quite fun if I make it lots of different colors how wide do I want the tie to be not that wide but pretty long I think okay I'll select some pieces and cut those These fabrics are so beautiful. 
This is such a good fun project. Um, let's see. What else do I want for my tie? That one. And how long do I want it to be? Have I got a tape measure somewhere? Let's work that out in a minute. Yeah, we'll keep those to one side because that's going to be possibly pockets on the pink side. And then, oh, there's another one of those. Well, I won't. I'll make that. I'll mix them up. We'll have that one. Okay then. So how wide? I'll cut these maybe two inches and then stitch them into a tube and turn it inside out. That'll work. And then if I get really in interested in hand stitching this, I might hand stitch all the way around the outside, all the way around the sleeves and the hem, and then I could hand stitch the tie as well. That'll be cool. Okay, so next time you see this will be in one second for you but might be in a couple of days for me because I'm going to spend all that time doing some hand stitching. What do we think? Do we like it? I think the construction of it, uh, rather than cutting it out and sewing it together like I was planning to do last time, I think the construction works really well. I'll tell you what else it needs. It needs a little hook on the back so that you can hang it up. So all these little extras, I think, will all get added in at the end of this video when you see this for the final time. Yeah. Gonna make the tie now. So I made these little belt loops here and instead of stitching them on top and bottom I've stitched them on like that in a little hanging loop. There's one on the other side as well. So I've made a little loop for the to hang it up with on one side and then on the pink side I thought well I might as well put a loop there as well. So we can hang it up on both sides but also they look like a little thing there. So I've got both the belt loops then. And so what we'll do now is we'll thread the belt through the loops. these bits are. I didn't cut anything off here. This is just the square of fabric and I quite like how that looks. So there it is. Done. My new dressing gown. If you didn't see part one of making this dressing gown, I'll leave a link to that in the card that's coming up in a moment. If you've enjoyed watching me finishing this dressing gown off, then give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And if you put the notifications bell on, you'll always know when I'm going to be posting something else. But for now, this is a finish on my dressing gown. Oh, I'll also leave the link to the place I bought the fabric from so that uh, you can go along and visit there if you want to and make your own dressing gown. So I'll see you next time with something else. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that will be. But I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.